Recently, there's been a number of news articles regarding alleged spiking incidents in the UK. Not the typical spiking of drinks, but actually spiking people with needles and drugs. According to this BBC news article, a police force is investigating 15 reports of spiking where the victims believe they were injected with a needle. So, let's take a look at the plausibility of these claims. Before we get started, I just want to say that spiking someone's drink or injecting them with a drug without them knowing is a serious crime that should be thoroughly investigated. The victims should get all the support they need. And any speculation in this video is based on news articles uh, and doesn't really take into account the actual real events that occurred. So keep that in mind. That being said, stories like this have a tendency to generate a lot of moral panic without much evidence. And now there are apparently multiple spiking incidents being reported in different cities. So, is there a serial spiker on the loose or have different people just started to inject uh, random people with needles in various places? Apparently, the first report of a person being spiked with something sharp was made on 2nd of October and since then there have been more reports from different days and venues and even cities. The majority have concerned young women, particularly students, but there have also been reports of young men being potentially spiked. One of the victims report waking up in a hospital after a suspected spiking incident in a nightclub. Essentially I don't remember anything until about 9am in hospital. Um, and I, was, I think I was in hospital for around 10 hours, which is just crazy to me. Um, my friends just said I just out of nowhere stopped being able to talk and then I was trying to type something on my phone to them. Whether I remember something happening in that moment, I'm not sure. Um, and then I was unable to stand up, basically carried out of the club and in the taxi on the way back to the house. I was really, really um, violently sick. Um, apparently I was kind of screaming as well and then losing consciousness and just not not how I would have been if I was just really intoxicated. My friends could tell it was completely different. So they called the ambulance in the taxi, which was only about a five minute ride. So that's how significant it was. And then back at the house while we were waiting for the ambulance, apparently I was just unconscious, essentially choking. And um, yeah, then, then obviously the ambulance took me to the hospital. A pinprick mark was found on the hand, as can be seen on this picture. Another report is similar, going to the bar, having a complete loss of memory until getting home. Uh, in this case, she describes how she didn't drink as much as usually on a night out uh, and uh, has never suffered memory loss from alcohol, I presume. Um, she woke up with a very painful sensation in her leg and found a pinprick mark. I know I didn't drink as much as I usually would on a night nice out this night and the fact that I don't remember anything is terrifying for me because this is something that is a very rare occasion to me. I've never suffered with memory loss and then the next morning obviously I did with the memory loss. I woke up with a really really painful leg. So you had what you had some kind of br uh, bruising did you? I didn't find any bruising or anything but I found a pinprick in my leg where which was the epicenter of all pain. It made me unable to walk and I was limping around, which, which was the only form of support I could really have as it was in so much agony. But you don't, you're saying about your memory there, you don't remember there being a, a we don't remember a moment in time when you felt something during the evening. I mean, I could have done on said night, but unfortunately I've got a full blackout of memory, so. Unfortunately, in both cases, it appears that there have been no drug testing done, which makes it difficult to say if there were unknown chemical substances in their bodies. It also raises the question of whether better guidelines should be set up for investigating uh, such cases. Now, there are many explanations for these and similar cases. 
They can be caused by alcohol intoxication or underlying medical conditions. But since we know nothing of their blood alcohol levels at the time of these incidents or their medical history, it is very difficult to say much about these possible causes. Then again, spiking drinks is not an urban legend. There are sick people out there actually spiking uh, drinks. But I believe this is relatively rare. But spiking drinks is not the question we'll be addressing today. Instead, I'll be focusing on uh, figuring out whether spiking someone with a needle is a plausible thing to do. And I believe it is very unlikely that these people have been spiked with a needle. Injecting drugs into unexpecting people is not an easy thing to do. The most plausible way to do it is to inject the drug intramuscularly to a big muscle like the gluteal muscles, commonly known as the buttocks. For a fast intramuscular injection, you need to have a relatively large needle, closer to something you would perhaps use uh, when brining a turkey. And I can tell you that hitting a moving, non-cooperating target, perhaps through clothing, is not an easy feat to do unless you've been trained by the KGB. After the needle is in the muscle, you still need to empty the syringe, which will take at least a few seconds for most drugs and solutions. In many cases, the volume of the injected drug can also be measured in milliliters. But there are also other factors that need to be taken into account. Choosing a drug that can be safely administered to a person already drunk requires knowledge of pharmacology and so on. And in any case, the effects of the drug will take several minutes to begin. The injection site will likely show more than a barely visible pinprick. At least if the needle is really like a big intramuscular needle. Then again, one could perhaps get away uh, injecting with a small needle like an insulin syringe. Uh, at least if the drug is potent enough to fit into those small volumes. But there are many issues with that as well, like the needle being very prone to bending, uh, it being very difficult to penetrate through any clothing really, and uh, typically in humans it's very difficult to reach a muscle uh, with, a, with a thin needle like that and a short needle. Finally, most of the plausible injectables have relatively long half-lives that will make them easy to detect if any urine or blood samples are collected in the following day or so. Now, if you look at this picture of an alleged uh, needle prick, the mark on one of the victim's hands is located in an area where there is virtually no muscle to target. To inject there, you would have to find a vein and have the needle go adjacent to the skin. An extremely difficult feat even for an expert assassin. But what do other experts think about this? In this Vice article, there was actually a good discussion about what uh, what could be possibly going on, and several experts were also interviewed. For example, one of the experts say GHB would be a poor candidate for injection due to the large amount of fluid needed, and therefore the thick, painful needle. This means that the substance involved would be something that would be highly detectable for several days in a toxicology screening, such as a benzodiazepine. Guy Jones, a senior scientist at Drugs Charity of the Loop, said essentially that it is difficult to find a spot for injection. And he also added that GHB would be a poor candidate for injection due to the large amount of fluid needed and therefore the thick painful needle. This means that the substance involved would be something that would be highly detectable for several days in a toxicology screening such as a benzodiazepine. David Caldicott, an emergency medicine consultant and the founder of the drug testing project Vedinos, said that uh, there are a couple of things that are disconcerting about this story. The technical and medical knowledge required to perform this would make this deeply improbable. It is at the level of a state-sponsored actor incapac incapacitating a dissident, like the Novichok incident. The idea that a clubber would do this to a fellow clubber seems highly unlikely to me. 
He also says, it's really hard to stick a needle in someone without them noticing, especially if you have to keep the needle in there for long enough, and so on. A critical care nurse who is familiar with intramuscular injecting and wish to remain anonymous, fearing a backlash, also shared that the likelihood of being able to administer a jab of ketamine, benzo or haloperidol, uh, probably the only drug, uh, drugs likely candidates for this, is virtually zero because of the needle size you need to quickly administer the liquid the drug is suspended in is a size that would hurt a lot when administered. Um, and Adam Winstock, the director of the Global Drug Survey, said that there are very few easily accessible drugs, medicines that would be given intramuscular in a small enough volume that people would not notice and the effects would take some time to go on. What you see in movies is not reality. People need to keep their drinks close to them, avoid taking them from strangers and keep an eye out for their mates. And I think I pretty much agree with that statement. So while it's theoretically plausible that someone would be injected with a drug using a needle, um, the, the probability of someone actually doing it on a dance floor or in a bar and getting away with it is, is relatively uh, small. Now, I may be wrong, but to me, the more likely explanation is that they consumed more alcohol than uh, they were aware of, or that their drinks were spiked uh, and they were not aware of that. What do you think about these news stories and the probability of getting injected uh, with a needle in a bar? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, press a like and subscribe to my channel for future neuropharmacology content. Thank you for watching and until next time.